Hello, this Science of Sport video is all to do with BTEC Sport and Exercise Sciences Unit 2 Functional Anatomy. We're um, focused in on the muscular system and this is the third video in a series of videos relating to the learning aim E2 Neuromuscular Process of Muscle Contraction. So what we're looking at in this video is types of muscle contraction which you may be familiar with already. The specification for this area um, identifies different types of muscle contraction, so isometric, concentric and eccentric, and those are both types of isotonic contraction. So there's a, a few terms that you need to understand. In order to produce movement, our muscles contract and must either shorten, lengthen or remain the same length. Muscle contractions can be divided into three categories, isotonic, isometric and isokinetic. Isotonic contractions occur when a muscle changes length whilst contracting. There are two types of isotonic contractions, isotonic concentric and isotonic eccentric. Isotonic concentric contractions occur when a muscle shortens under tension. An example of this would be during the upwards phase of the squat. The quadriceps muscle group, working as the agonist, contract and shorten under tension, causing extension at the knee. Isotonic eccentric contractions occur when a muscle lengthens under tension. This occurs during the lowering phase of movements or when landing from a jump. Here, muscles act as a break and counteract the force of gravity. During the lowering phase of a squat, the quadriceps muscle contracts eccentrically. It is lengthening but still contracting at the same time. So we've got two categories of contraction. Isotonic, where the same tension is applied. Um, but there is movement, there is a change in length of the muscle. We've also got isometric contraction, where, the same, where there is tension in the muscle, but the muscle stays the same length. Because it stays, stays the same length, there's actually no movement. Let's have a little look at an example to illustrate that. So on the left, we've got A and B. A and B represent both of our uh, examples of isotonic contraction. So tension in the muscle, a, sh a shortening in this case, a lengthening in this case of the muscle, so a change in length of the muscle and movement occurring. On the right we've got C, which is our example of isometric contraction. Contraction or tension in the muscle, but the muscle stays the same length and therefore there's no movement. So importantly you need to appreciate that concentric contraction is where the muscle shortens during contraction and movement occurs. Eccentric contraction is where the muscle lengthens during contraction whilst contracting and movement occurs. Typically these create different kinds of movements and we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. So some information about uh, isotonic concentric contraction. We know already that it involves the muscle length chaining, changing. We know already that it involves the muscle length shortening. And the way that I try to remember this is concentric contra contraction involves the ends of the muscle, the tendons, getting closer. So when the muscle shortens, the insertion gets nearer to, so in this diagram it shows it getting nearer to the origin. So concentric is when the length of the muscle or the ends of the muscle get closer. You must remember of course there is tension within this type of contraction, so the muscle is contracting and it's often what we call the positive phase of a movement, often the upward phase, not always but often the upward phase. Another important factor to realise is that in order to move the muscle in this direction or in this way, the force generated by the muscle has got to be bigger than the resistance or the load. So the biceps brachii here in this example has got to generate a force which is greater than the load force of this dumbbell in order to be able to move it and create flexion at the elbow. So in contrast, we've got eccentric contraction. Again, it's categorized as isotonic. There is a, a same force applied, but um, there is a change in length of the muscle. Now, again, the muscle is contracting, but whilst it's contracting, it's actually lengthening or elongating. So that's a really nice way of remembering this. Eccentric contraction involves 
elongation of the muscle. That means lengthening of the muscle during the contraction phase. And in contrast, again, to concentric, this often is the negative phase or a downward phase of a movement. We've got gravity. If this person was holding their dumbbell, uh, having just done the upward phase, we've got gravity that wants to push it down. So when we want to straighten the arm, we don't need to contract our triceps. We've got gravity pulling the bice, uh, pulling the dumbbell down. But what we do want to do is lower it under control. And so the biceps brachii act as the agonist again in the downward phase, and lower the forearm with the dumbbell in under control. So eccentric contraction is often a way of controlling downward movements, often a way of working against gravity to try and break us. So this, I just want to explain this, this bottom phrase here, resistance is greater than the force generated. So in order for us to control movement or allow movement downwards, the resistance force pulling us down with gravity has got to be bigger than the muscular force created by the pull of the muscle on our forearm. What we would probably do is we would we would contract the muscle slightly less than the force and generate a force that is slightly less than the resistance of this, the force of this dumbbell, so that there's slightly greater force pulling downwards than we are pulling upwards. Hence, the movement is downwards, but under control. If we picked up a dumbbell or had a dumbbell that was way too heavy, and there's a big difference between the downward force and what I can generate by my muscular force upwards, that's when the movement would be out of control. It would be pulled down really rapidly and dangerously. So eccentric muscle contraction is contraction phase where the muscle elongates or lengthens and it's often associated with a downward controlling movement. Thirdly then, um, isometric contraction. So this is when there is uh, the muscle stays the same length, there is contraction, but it's balanced between the muscular force pulling pulling up on the forearm and the downward resistance force, the load force, gravity sort of pulling down the uh, dumbbell here. So no movement occurs in this type of contraction. It is a static contraction. Just to finish then a couple of demonstrations of the types of exam question you might come across. Here's one that says explain the type of muscle contraction used to hold this position, three marks. So it wants a little bit of detail. Um, basically, this person's in a wall sit and the dominant agonist muscles, as you may know from probably having done wall sits in fitness testing at schools, is your quadriceps here, the four muscles that make up your quadricep. Now, to earn your three marks, the mark scheme asks you to say that it's isometric contraction. It's the contraction that occurs when muscle develops tension. So it's important to recognize that all these different types of contraction involve muscle tension, but there's no change in length in the muscle, and that would have earned you the three marks. This other type of question you might get specifically asks about one of the two isotonic types of contraction. So explain how eccentric muscle contraction allows movement of the elbow during the downward phase. Try to make a connection, please, between eccentric muscle contraction and downward phases of any sort of exercise, the downward phase of a bicep curl, the downward phase of a, squ uh, a squat, it will always be eccentric contraction. And again, it's for four marks. So here's a mark scheme. During the down phase, the triceps brachii eccentrically contract. So you've identified the agonist muscle, uh, described the triceps brachii as the agonist muscle. You've recognized that there is tension and lengthening, and importantly, that eccentric contraction is often about controlling movements, lowering with control, a breaking action.